Welcome to the Wise Guys video on significant digits. Sometimes it's also called significant figures. When we're working with uh, mathematics and science, we are usually dealing with two different kinds of numbers. One of them is exact numbers, and the other one is approximate numbers. Exact numbers are things that are exact. Right here on this board, I have some magnetic pieces that hold down the paper. These are exact. I have right here exactly three magnetic pieces. I also have beside me some pens, some other things, keys. I have exactly five items right here. A bunch of different stuff. So if I was counting my books, I could say I have precisely 45 books. If I was counting my money, I could say I have exactly $12.63. So anything that's absolutely definite, the people in a room, 12 people in a room, we don't have 12 and a half people. Or exact numbers are determined by either definition or counting. Definition means something like 60 seconds per minute. We know that there's exactly 60 seconds in one minute, so those numbers are exact. And certain definitions, such as the radius of a circle, we know that the radius is exactly the diameter divided by 2. So this number here, then, is an exact number. Approximate numbers are the numbers that we usually use in mathematics and science, and they are determined by measurement. And most of these measurements are generally considered to have some degree of error or uncertainty. Why do we need significant figures? We need them because when we're using approximate numbers that have error or uncertainty, we need to know that our finer, final calculation reflects the accuracy of the numbers. So for example, let's say we have two people who are measuring a fenced corral. Now let's say person A measures the length, and they measure it as 40 meters. Let's say person B measures the width, and they measure it as 12, oh sorry, 12.73 meters. You can see that for whatever reason, person B has measured the length or the, the, the width more accurately than person A has measured the length. Now unless person A tells us that this is exactly 40 meters, no question about it. We don't really know how accurate that measurement is. It could be 39.5 meters. It could be 40.4 meters. We don't actually know unless we were told precisely. This one here also could be out a little bit, but let's assume that person B has told us, yes, this is definitely 12.73 meters, no question about it. Now let's say we want to calculate the area of this fenced corral. To calculate the area, we multiply length times width. Let's try the first length that it may be. 39.5 meters. And let's multiply it by the 12.73 because we've been told that that's an accurate measurement. So we would end up with 0.5 times 12.73. We'd end up with 502.8 three five meters squared. Now if we use the other measurement, 40.4 meters for the length, and we're still going to use the 12.73 meters 
for the width, we'd have 40 point, shoot. Can't find my delete button. Twelve point seven three equals five one four point two nine meters squared. You can see we have for the first measurement five hundred and two, approximately five hundred and three meters squared. Here we have about five hundred and fourteen meters squared. There's a difference of about twelve meters squared. And if you look at these two numbers, you can see that if we sort of averaged them out a little bit, we could say that the number is probably, if we said it was 500 meters squared, it might be around that, okay? So we don't actually know what the dimension of this corral is. So the reason that we use significant figures is to make sure that our answer, our calculation, reflects a valid accuracy. Now, how do we do that? We do it by counting all the digits in a number except the zeros that locate the decimal point. And by that, I mean when you look at these numbers here, we would be counting the digits in both of these numbers to decide what the significant figures are in those numbers so we can determine the significant figures we need to use in this last calculation. So we have some general rules that we follow. The first one is that the zeros at the beginning of numbers are not considered significant. So they are not counted. These zeros here are only placing the decimal. So we only count the 4 and the 5. And in this case, we say we have two significant figures. When we have zeros at the end of a decimal, they are significant, so we do count them. So we have 18.400, we count all these digits, and the reason for that is if someone is, say, measuring a pipe, and they measure it to the thousandths degree of accuracy, then we need to count that. So we count all five of these digits, and so we have five sig figs here. If we have zeros within a number, they are significant. So we, they are counted. These two zeros tell us that we have zero one hundreds and zero tens. If we didn't have the zeros here, we have 36.1, which is not what this number is. So we have to count these zeros. So again, we have one, two, three, four, five significant figures here, and we have to count them. Now, when we're talking about whole numbers without a decimal point, they can be either approximate or exact. If we had 7,200 pens, then we would say this is exactly 7,200. If we knew there were 7,200 people at a concert, there'd be exactly 7,200 people. So if this is an exact number, and we've been told it's exact, we use every digit. And so we say we have four significant figures. However, if we're told that it's a measurement, such as a velocity or a distance, we assume, unless we're told otherwise, that it is an approximate number, so we would only count the 7 and the 2. So if it's approximate, there are only two significant figures, okay? OK, 
Okay, let's do some examples here. We have 2.69, we don't have any zeros to deal with. So we count all three of these digits. So here we have three significant figures. In this question number two, again, we have the zeros to the left of the number. These zeros are simply placing the decimal, so we do not count them. So we only count the digits three and five. So we have two significant figures here. 890.02, the zeros within the number are counted. So we count all five of these digits. We have five significant figures. In this number here, 26,000, it depends on, again, on whether number is exact or approximate. If we're told that this number is exact, we count every single digit. So if it's exact, we would have five significant figures. However, if it's a measurement, so it's approximate, we would only count the two and the six. So that would be two. 7.50, any zero on the right or after the decimal is counted. So we must count that zero because that tells us that whoever made this measurement measured to that degree of accuracy. So here we have three significant figures. And let's assume this last number is approximate. We would count the zero that's within these two numbers, but we do not count the zero at the end. So we have one, two, three, four significant figures here. Now, just uh, you can pause this video and take a look at these questions and take a few moments just to try and answer them yourself and then restart the video and I will tell you the answers to the questions. Okay, question number one. We do not count the zeros to the left of this number, so we have only two significant figures here. Question number two, again, these are approximate numbers, so we only count these first three digits. So we have three. Question number three, we count the zeros within a number. So here we have four significant digits. Question number four, we count the zero between the eight and the nine, but we do not count the zeros to the left of eight. So here we have three significant digits. Question five, we count all of them because we count the zeros within the other numbers. So here we have six. Question number six, we count all of these numbers because we have one zero to the right of the decimal. That means that this, this thing has been measured to that degree of accuracy. So we have one, two, three, four, five significant digits. Again, same situation here. This has been measured to the hundredth degree of accuracy, so we count one, two, three, four, five, and this is an approximate number. We do not count this zero, so we have one, two, three, four significant figures. If you have any questions, you can contact the Learning Assistance Center at 632251, and this is the presentation by the Wise Guys.